Yay Networks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Jojo Mayhem. Hannah, how are you feeling today? I'm good, thank you, Shane. I'm uh, so glad to be here. Oh no, a little, can you a little bit louder? Um, I'm having. I'm feeling great. Can you okay? Just be a bit more forceful with your voice. <laughs> this is a podcast, and the okay. audio is very important. I need you to enunciate, really project. Here we go. Welcome back to Jojo Mayhem. How are you feeling, Hannah? Um, I'm feeling really, I'm feeling good today. Oh, boy. Well, everyone, if you haven't noticed, Hannah does not have a voice. <laughs> that is not very <laughs> conducive to making a podcast. Yeah. This has been a rough week. We're getting ready to head home from L.A. We depart in like a day. And Hannah came down with some weird thing that made her voice disappear. I, I don't understand. <laughs> Hannah, just maybe let me handle okay. this one. Uh, so today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we are obviously not going to subject you to 45 minutes of listening to that. Why not? You know what? Can you sing us a song? <laughs> Here's Hannah with the ABCs. A, B, <laughs> B, C. I, for some reason, B. I am so turned on. You like, ah. I, it's not even there enough to talk. <laughs> All right. So instead, today we are going to be looking back over our first 20 plus episodes wow. and picking out some of our favorite, funniest, most mayhemy moments. Yay. We hope that you all understand that we are only doing this because of Hannah's horrific <laughs> vocal cords right now. Yeah. We will be back with a regular episode next week, but this is going to be a fun one regardless, mostly because you won't have to listen to that. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye. So I think that everyone's going to wonder why are we called Squirming and drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's like the most common question. I know. I was about to say, do you remember when we kept it a secret early on? I do. It was a secret on our channel for like eight months. And then we finally told people about who was squirming and who was drugs. Yeah. And what, like, what oh. those names even meant. It's because we were embarrassed. It's <laughs> not because we were being like smart about it. We were just like, oh, this is embarrassing. We don't really want to say. And then it got to the point where we had to say. And now every speaking engagement we do. <laughs> Every video we put up, we get the question, who's Scrummy, who's Grubs, and why are those your names? So these were our adorable and very cringy nicknames for one another, pet names, yeah. you might call them, mm -hmm. for each other from very early on in our relationship. I am called... Squirmy by Shane because he claims that I squirm around in bed at night and like keep him awake. It's not a claim. It is. It's a fact. Like I, I'm going to set up the camera tonight and I'm going to hold you in your sleeve and I'm going to share it online that people are going to see that you are a rotisserie chicken in bed. You just gyrate the whole night. I sleep very soundly, so I just don't see how that's possible. But I... That is evidence of how right I am. You are sound asleep. You have no idea what you're doing. I will say that I uh, was, I do move around in bed a lot. Like I, I understand that. I accept it. And the other night I was rolling around fully asleep and <laughs> woke myself up by slamming my knees into Shane's butt. So. Yeah. And you know who else that woke up violently? Yeah, well, you yelled. I woke up with a yelp. <laughs> you read that in like books and stuff, you know. Someone woke up with a fright. I've always rolled my eyes at that. That's not real. That doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> when you get kneed in the rear end from a like collegiate swimmer with the legs of steel <laughs> just pummeling your rear. It was really violent. I moved. I moved in bed because of, <laughs> I mean, I'm a lot smaller than you. <laughs> it hurt my knees. That's it hurt your knees. That's heavy impact. Anyway, do you want to explain to them why I am grubs? Yeah, so I call Shane grubs because his hands are always really sweaty and grubby. And I don't know if it has to do with SMA. I don't know if it's just a Shane-specific quirk. 
but his hands are always really grubby. You should feel them right now. I dare you to reach over. Right, no, Go ahead. No, feel, no, feel my pinky. No, thank you. <laughs> I, can, I can only imagine how sweaty they are right now. So we began lovingly telling each other these names just to put fun. Yeah. And when we started our YouTube channel, we really didn't think anyone would be watching. So we just put the names Army and Grubs, not really even thinking about it. Yeah. And now everyone watches. So <laughs> now you all know our embarrassing pet names. Yep. Should we move on to the IVF stuff? Yeah, so let's get to the boring part of the show. Okay. <laughs> do you want to go over your results first or my results? Why don't we do yours? I okay. feel like mine were a bit more scary. Yeah. Um, well, who knew? Like, we didn't know anything about mine. We knew that yours were probably not great. I was expecting the doctor. Well, just go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so for my results, um, they were checking, obviously, like every single thing that they could check in my blood. Mm -hmm. All of that was good, except for my vitamin D was insufficient. <sighs> so I'm now on vitamin D supplements. You along with everyone else in the Midwest right now. I know, but no not you. No outside. Well, I have profound amounts of vitamin D. <laughs> Person through my veins. <laughs> I don't have muscle, but I have vitamin D. Oh, and why <laughs> is that? I do not understand. I definitely go outside more than you. <laughs> so, oh, you do take a milkshake every night, like a protein shake. You probably get every vitamin you need. Don't, don't, no. Why do you get I every am vitamin? I'm inherently better <laughs> than you in areas of vitamin D. So, vitamin D was the only thing in my blood that they found that was bad. Um, and then they did the oh, ultrasound. And the sludge. <laughs> <laughs> they did the ultrasound and some like hormone things to see how many eggs I have left and then also how many follicles. So like the eggs, they don't have an exact amount because there's like a ton of them. Wait. What, Shane? What's a follicle? Are you serious? Yeah, what's a follicle? You don't know what a follicle well, is. I, I did, but now I don't remember. We did all of those learning modules and you don't know what a follicle is. And I passed those <laughs> tests with flying colors. Because I was the one clicking the buttons. there were a lot of words. Mm -hmm. The follicles are in the ovaries, and however many follicles you have, like most of them will grow an egg during an IVF cycle. That's oh, okay. how they knew how many eggs I would Got probably it. get from a cycle. Got it. So normally only like one follicle is stimulated per month, and you drop one egg. But IVF, they'll do all of them. You know, they're like, come okay. on, as many eggs as possible. Okay. So they think that I have between 14 and 20 follicles, so that's about how many eggs they think I would you get. You're just riddled with follicles. <laughs> Uh, but that's an estimate just from an ultrasound. Is that the thing in your ear? Oh my gosh, Shane, you are out of control. You I'm, need to simmer down. I'm in a bit of a mood. You're in a mood. I'm feeling follicle-y. You really are. So the doctor was happy with my side of things. I also got genetic carrier testing done. I knew that I didn't carry SMA. We did that testing like three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> uh, but this time I did all the whole panel that shows pretty much everything that they can test for in this test, which is a bunch of different things. I am not a carrier for any genetic uh, conditions, and so our children will not have those specific genetic conditions. Good Most likely, know. you know, because know. there's always a chance it was wrong. I feel like there's... The just, modules taught me that. The mo <laughs> they were like, just so you know, it's not 100%. Just so you know, we're going to test you, but don't even like to do it <laughs> because it can be wrong, so whatever. Um and then we moved on to my yes. portion. I think the doctor was doing that on purpose. Saving yours. My news was a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Um, the big thing here was whether or not I had enough viable spermies, mm -hmm. which is the medical term, um, <laughs> to perform IVF, basically. Yeah. So I was going into this appointment, like, ready to find out we can't do it. And then that's mm -hmm. just the thing that we have to... Figure out together, you know, it was going to be something. Yep. The doctor said that in their their analyzation, is that a word? Analyzation? Yeah. Yeah, analysis. Analysis of <laughs> my sperm. I have very, very, very few yep. viable sperm, but. But just caveat, enough. <laughs> just enough. Just enough to make it work. Yep. She said that it will be one of their more complicated male cases, Yep. but she was confident in the plan um, and that I did have enough to hopefully make it work. And so. we are getting their lead embryologist. We are. Because she was like... They're bringing out the big guns. This embryologist is going to be sitting there under a microscope, hand selecting <laughs> the, you know, 20 best sperm <laughs> on the day of. That person is going to know me better than <laughs> anyone on earth. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> So that's our news. That's our 
IVF stuff. We are now in the process of looking at our schedules. We have a bunch of travel coming up that we planned yeah, years ago. Let me look at our schedule here. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's pretty intensive. We need to be here for those couple of weeks. And so we're selecting our weeks now. It's not going to be for a bit because, again, we booked out we you know, our, yeah. our time a while ago. So, And we're not in like a huge rush for this to begin, mostly because I'm not really in a rush to give myself injections. <laughs> but it, it'll come pretty soon. And I just want to thank the people who have left comments saying that like, you know, this is a very private thing and like don't feel the need to overshare. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a very delicate balance yeah. that we're working with here. You know, having this huge life thing that we're going through, but also wanting to tell you about it. Yeah. So we're going to keep being careful. We are back with my dumpster dive. A little different this week. I'm doing two different topics, okay? Two dumpster dives? Yeah, and they are two different examples of unlikely simultaneous historical events. I saw a post about this recently. It listed like 10 things that happened at the same time in history that are kind of mind blowing, like things that you think wouldn't be at the same time. And so I looked up more and this is like a thing that, you know, there's, there's articles about this things being happening like, at the same time. There's this thing. <laughs> it does no, happen. Just like lists of like, I bet you don't think these happened at the same time, you know? And so I picked two of them and I'm going to go in depth on both of them. Can you give me a flavor of this? Like, like do, they, do you have examples that aren't the ones that you're going to cover? No. Okay. I mean, I do in my brain, but I'm going to do this like next week. So <laughs> no, I'm going to keep all of them and I'm just going to begin. And this, this is your, you're not getting a flavor. You're getting the whole dish. Um, uh, Are you ready? This, uh, this episode is very food oriented. I know. So this is number one. Give this is the, what we're going to talk about. Give me the mouthfeel. All right, Shane. Woolly mammoths existed when the Great Pyramids were being built. No. <laughs> This is going to be Shane the entire time. He's just going to be in disbelief. I kind of thought, I don't know if it's just me. I thought that woolly mammoths were dinosaurs. Me too. They're not. As the, as the learner of this information, yeah. I just want to tell you, I thought the woolly mammoths were dinosaur times. Yeah. Like T-Rexes and woolly mammoths were out there fighting each other and that the pyramids were built in, all oh, my history teachers throughout <laughs> my school and you're going to be like, Jesus, Shane, we did better than this. Mm -hmm. I thought they were built in like maybe the 1400s, 1500s. The 1500s? Uh, yeah. Shane. I don't know. The 1500s, like in medieval times? Yeah. The Great Pyramids? I mean, we, didn't, <laughs> we had to get to a point of technology. Like, oh, basically, really no. The whole technology. point of them is that people can't, they still don't know how they're made. I don't know how they were made okay. in the 1500s. <clears throat> Let's just begin because this is this is painful. <laughs> The Great Pyramids were built from roughly 2550 to 2490 BC. Okay. So Shane, you're like you're like 3000 years. Off. I mean, you're 4000 years off. Okay. Okay. So it's like 3 4000 years ago, right? 5000 years 5, ago. 5000 years ago. Mm. See, math is not about history, math, no thank you. So go all the way back to zero, you know, 2000 years ago, then go all the way back 2500 more years. Or like from us to Jesus. And then back the equal amount. I think that counting time using Jesus as zero point <laughs> I know. is a stupid method. I agree. Just but go ahead year that. zero. Okay. We well, should make a better system. Nothing no, I think we'll just stick with what we use now. That would be really confusing if we decided to rebrand. Who do I email about this? Okay. Your timekeepers. So this era in you know 2500 BC was during Egypt's old kingdom era. That's when they were built. And there are three great pyramids. And they were each built by three different pharaohs. Okay. Okay. So there's Khufu. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly. I watched videos on how to pronounce them, but that was last night. So Khafre and Mankare. Yeah. I mean, I guess one of those was not said. Right? I know, but <laughs> I tried. The biggest one is Khufu. It contains more than 2 million stone blocks, each one ranging from two and a half tons to 15 tons. Two million? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? That's what you have a, a source there? said. These are all sources. I mean, I don't know. If the New York Times is wrong, it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> who's, your, who's your source? Pyramids were built by aliens.com. <laughs> yeah, literally. But they, they honestly don't know how they were made. It was It's like technology that we don't understand how they did it. We cannot even conceptualize 
one million. I know. I can conceptualize a building made of a hundred thousand yeah, of those. I know. Wow. And a pharaoh, he was like, build that for me. I want my tomb to be in that. Yeah, I mean, not to, you know, overlook the human suffering that probably... Well, no, they actually, the article I read says that like the people that built it were from all different areas of like this kingdom and it was like an honor probably. Like, I don't know oh, if that's really? true, but like they were well fed. I they no lived idea. nearby. I don't yeah. know. See, I thought they were, it was more of a slave thing. I don't, it, that's not what the article said, but again, like I'm, I'm not positive about that, Okay, but who knows? But it could have been. It sounds like it would be awful. So maybe the woolly mammoths built the pyramids. Were part of the. I mean, what other animal? Well, no, Shane. Did okay. I just jump way too far ahead. No, we're moving on to woolly mammoths now. But unfortunately, they did not live in Egypt. I they're. Saw, I solved it. They're not from Egypt. They lived in, uh, like the northern hemisphere, so North America, Europe, and Asia, all in the northern area where it's cold because they're woolly. I, oh yeah. Okay, so they're not in Egypt. Right. So while the pyramids are being built, they don't even know about woolly mammoths, most transport. likely. If they had the ability to build a two million giant block pyramid, they must have had a ready to get a woolly mammoth down there, <laughs> float it down the ocean. <laughs> okay, so woolly mammoths lived from around 300,000 years ago to about 10,000 years ago during the Pleistocene era, which I learned was the era right before our era that we're in now. Wow. I know. 300,000 to 10,000 years ago. Yep. They had a long run. Good for them. I know. How long have humans lived? I don't know. How, I don't know, Shane. There were humans. There were pre-humans. There were, you know, other species. Anyway, so woolly mammoths, on the other hand, lived from about 300,000 years ago until the last known group passed away. <laughs> <laughs> All at once. <laughs> In uh, about 1650 BC, which was a thousand years after the Great Pyramids were built. Whoa. A thousand years. Holy mammoths had a good run. They really did. They lived a long time. I know. And they are one of the species that's extinct that we know the most about because we have found like entirely preserved bodies of woolly mammoths in Alaska and Siberia, just frozen. Interesting. Like that you can, you know, see pictures. They really are just, they're just there. Did you learn it all about woolly mammoths? Well, I learned that there's an organization that is dedicated to bringing back the woolly mammoth from extinction <laughs> with DNA that they got from a frozen body. That's like Jurassic Park in real life. Yeah, and they hope to have it done by 2027. They're doing it? Yeah, yes. Just... I just told you they're an organization dedicated to doing it. Okay, but like... I just made an organization <laughs> dedicated to like, you know, owning every continent in the world that they well, yeah. going to do it. They claim that they should have it done by 2027. Who is overseeing I know. that process? I, and at first, I hope like, they're being very careful. What do you think about that? Do you think that we should or shouldn't do that as humans? Bring back Willie Mammoth? <laughs> yeah. Are they going to help us build more pyramids? No, probably not. They're really, they're just elephants. They're mixing the DNA with elephants. So it won't be a real woolly Mammoth? No, I think it will be. It's like a science thing. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be a Partially. They're splicing its DNA onto an elephant. I don't know. It's, it's going to be mostly woolly mammoth. It sounds like a slippery slope. I know. It really does. However, I found out that woolly mammoths went extinct because they were overhunted by humans. So at least it's like righting a wrong. Leave it to humans. <laughs> To ruin something amazing. Isn't that, I really thought that woolly mammoths died with the dinosaurs. Like, that was my I understanding. Too. I was like, it all died at the same time. And that was it. Yep. Ice Age and then asteroids. No, Ice Age was after. Ice Age is like right right before wow. us. It's just. I want one woolly mammoth to be brought back. <laughs> no, two. So that they can be friends. Yeah. But it'd be killed to see one in real life. That's true. No, it would be sad. Has, it would be kept in like a zoo. Yeah. It wouldn't be a free woolly mammoth. <laughs> no, it probably wouldn't be. If we release it in the wild. Maybe I'm a preserve. Sure, maybe a woolly mammoth preserve. I'm sure we'd find another way to hunt them. <laughs> we'd True. find a way to mess it up. You could pay to hunt them in our, the preserve. Our track record is not good. I know. <laughs> and what's the point of bringing back a woolly mammoth just because we can? Well, the scientific. I think if you can like prove that you should do it. Yeah. But like not do it. <laughs> Maybe that's just for the science of it, you know? Yeah. It's a mathematical proof. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. I'm so ready. Shane, you're going to love it. It okay. is about the Oregon Trail. 
my favorite video game. Well, I know that you're a big fan of the game, Oregon Trail. Fun fact, the Oregon Trail game was invented by some guys that went to my uh, college, Carleton College. I mean, I found that out. That was a moment in history yeah. converging for me. Yeah, Shane was like, no way. That's amazing. You mean I set foot on the campus yeah. <laughs> where Oregon Trail was created? Well, I think they might have done it after college, but... I'm not, I'm not, maybe that's not true. Let I don't know. Dream, okay. <laughs> it was, it was conceptualized there. I bet. We're going to have to ford the river. Okay. So Shane, <laughs> I know you're a big fan of the game, but what is the Oregon trail? <sighs> I, <was worried> about <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know anything about it. So I'm curious if you do. I am hoping that playing the game was not a complete waste of mm-hmm. brain space. And that it taught me something real. Based on the game, I would guess that the Oregon Trail was a common route for settlers Mm -hmm. traveling west. From where to where? From the east. From where? To Oregon. To where? (laughs) Where? (laughs) I mean, a lot of it takes place like in the desert plains, not desert plains, but the great plains. Yeah. So maybe I'll say. Like the northern route, maybe like Boston to oh. <laughs> Portland. <laughs> no, I mean, I that's a good one. That's a, probably not hold that No, that's that a really one. good guess. I mean, Boston probably was. Too. That is a really good guess. Okay. So the Oregon Trail was a roughly 2,200 mile long wagon route. Okay, that's not the whole country. No, it connected the Missouri River in Independence, Missouri to Oregon City, Oregon. So you started at the river. You started in Missouri at the river. Probably you got you got there from, I don't know, from somewhere. You took the river. Then you got off the river. Or maybe they lived there. I don't know. But you start at the Missouri River and you go through the country to Oregon. Interesting. And it took travelers about five months Oof. from start to end. That is a rough, on this trail. rough journey. <laughs> Horrible. Okay, so it began as something that could only be traversed on foot or on horseback, and it was used by fur traders. And then it was progressively cleared by like people in wagons. They were like, "We've got to get through." So they were just like clearing it. Took years. Um, but there's in- a woolly mammoth up here. Should we kill it? Yeah, it's in our way. Literally. Um, so by 1836, wagons could get from Missouri to Idaho. And then finally, seven years later, the first wagon arrived in Oregon. They finally cleared it. So in 1843, the first wagon had traversed the entire Oregon Trail, and it thus became the Oregon Trail. 1843. Is that when you thought this was happening? I should have asked you when it was happening. I would have, well, I think I would have said the 1800s. Really? Maybe the 1700s. I would have said 1700s. Yeah, I, I would have said a long time ago. Yeah. What was happening at the same time? And we're not there yet, Shane. A little more about the Oregon Trail. From the 1830s to the 1860s, about 400,000 settlers who were farmers, ranchers, and miners used the trail. Miners as in people that mined the earth, not miners as in children. (laughs) Uh, 10,000 people and (laughs) 400,000 children. (laughs) Miners. Uh, So these people seized land from the Native Americans who lived there. And began using it to mine and farm. So hmm. really another, nice. Another example of yep. humans being the worst. Great job. And then finally, the first transcontinental railway was established or completed in 1869. And that defeated the purpose of the trail. And it was then defunct. Imagine being like the last <laughs> wagon user to do that yeah. trip. And then like the next train pulls in. <laughs> after they arrive, they're like, oh, you should just take a train. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got dysentery eight times. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Shane. So I'm going to tell you something that was invented at the same time that the Oregon Trail began. Okay. Okay. It's a piece of technology as a hint. What do you think it was? When the Oregon Trail began. Yeah, 1843. Mid-1800s. Yeah. What do you think was being invented around that time? Oh. The wheel? When was that? No, it couldn't have been the wheel. The (laughs) wheel had to be around. Love you. I was kidding. (laughs) They were using wagons. (laughs) I took it as a a real idea for a second. (laughs) Um, Not fire. Okay. Uh, (laughs) uh, Let's see. A gun. A gun? Yeah. No, I think guns were earlier. Okay, had good. Yeah, they were earlier. <laughs> um, good guess, though. Not, nothing electric. 
Although I don't know when electricity was <laughs> discovered. Uh, oh my god, if electricity was discovered before that, I'm going to be embarrassed. Um, I am going to say, final answer, penicillin. Penicillin. Yep. Wow. Okay, well, first of all, electricity was discovered by Benjamin Franklin in the 1700s. Uh, just so you know, I just Googled it. So your guess is penicillin. Yeah. Which actually, I should find out when, pen- when, when it was invented. 1928. So you're, at, you're ahead of the time. It is not penicillin. It is, Shane, the fax machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Yes. Okay, in 1843. I was, I was way off by thinking yeah. that electricity hadn't even been. I know. <laughs> A Scottish inventor named Alexander Baines... I assume that's how you say it. Uh, Mr. Baines. Yeah. Secured a British patent for what he termed the electric printing telegraph. They had internet? internet? No, it's not internet. It allowed messages to be sent across wires and printed at a receiving station far away from where you began. And it led to the first commercially practical telefax service between Paris and Lyon. Is that how you say it? Lyon? Uh In 1861. What? They were sending faxes yeah. back then. In a practical way in 1861, while people were traversing the Oregon Trail. <laughs> people in Paris are like, what are you doing? Hon, send a fax to Portland. <laughs> yeah. Let them know that we'll be there in mm, five to six months <laughs> if everything goes perfectly. No, we didn't have fax. That was in Paris, Shane. They weren't, the, the settlers were not sending faxes. So were we just like way less technologically advanced well, it here. seems like it what were we doing i don't know we were too busy worrying about 40 rivers well yeah we were stealing land and mining it and people in paris were like send a message <laughs> over silly, the wires <laughs> silly americans <laughs> what are they doing but yeah can you believe that that's so well then what was like the telephone invented oh jesus alexander grim bell if i remember correctly <laughs> <laughs> i had to do that for the bonus points although i'm probably wrong the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Boom. You're right. Nailed it. Uh, in 1876. So like after a little bit after. Yeah. Interesting. Not that far after though. Yeah, no, if you could go back in time. Wait, wasn't Alexander? Was Alexander Graham Bell American? Yeah, he was. So at least we got that. Yeah, but we didn't get the pyramids. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, we're gonna do the woolly mammoths. Um, if you could go back in time. And ride the Oregon Trail, mm-hmm. you know, completely authentically. Uh huh. No technology, other than the fax machine. Yeah. Would you do it? No. Why? Why would you? People died. Well, so people much. Died today. I would not want to do that. What? F- like that sounds like such a pain in the butt. You I have think- to have food with you. You have to have food. No. It's probably you get not- a rattlesnake bite. Oh. There's all those things in the game that happen to you. I don't want that to happen to me. Everything, would you do it? Every, no, I would never. I would make it a day. <laughs> Wagons are not really sure accessible. What do you think? Th- why do you think that I, just because I can like walk, I would not make it either? You've always struck me as like a woman of the prairie. I would like know? to live. I would like to live in the prairie now, but I like my modern conveniences. You like your fax machine. <laughs> I would at least need to be in like 1860 for a for a practical fax machine. <laughs> Well, that was very interesting. Thank you for enlightening me on those two yeah. very specific historical <laughs> Well, slightly different than a typical dumpster dive, but I kind of like that format. So all of you listening and watching, yeah. at your next party, whip one of those bad boy facts out. And I've got a lot more where those came from. Blow everyone's mind. Yeah. We are back from our break. We're ready to play Unpopular Opinions. I've got the list in front of us. This game is very simple. Mm-hmm. Do you want to describe how we play? Yeah. I'm going to read. It's barely even a game. It's it's a game. I'm going to read an unpopular opinion okay. that we have found on Reddit. On Reddit, it's not our unpopular opinion. We might not agree. I'm going to read it, and then we are going to react. We're going to say whether we agree, whether we disagree, whether this even needs to be said at all. If it's really boring. Okay. We're going to see. And I picked these out. You haven't really seen them yet. I have not seen them yet. Shane found these on Reddit. Here we go. Uh, this first one feels like a personal attack. Salt and vinegar flavored chips taste like stomach acid. Hard, hard agree. I uh, I have no words. Stom- hard, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Stomach acid burns your throat. You know that feeling right after you've puked 
and you're just like, oh, I need to drink a thousand gallons of water to get that horrible flavor out of my throat. Salt and vinegar chips elicit the exact feeling. Not, it's not even like a flavor thing. And I, I agree that they uh, taste horrible. No one should eat them. Are but you the, done? The actual physical reaction is that of, oh, I've just been eating stomach bile. Okay, there. wrap it up. Go ahead. Wrap it up. What do you think? I love salt and vinegar chips. You know I love salt and vinegar chips. I could not more strongly disagree with this statement. I do not think they taste like stomach acid. Do you think they are better than regular potato chips, unflavored? Shane, I could never answer that. It Every flavor of chip is for a specific time. If I'm in the mood for salt and vinegar chips, I'm not in the mood for a regular chip. So at that moment, I will say, absolutely, I could not stomach a regular chip. I want salt and vinegar. All right. Next unpopular opinion, please. Hmm. Okay. If I invite you to hang out and you say, yeah, but do you mind if I invite a friend too, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I that feels a little far to say like you're an asshole, but I, I really don't like that. I would agree with this one. I don't yeah. know if this is an unpopular I know. opinion. I think most people would agree with this. I know. Like, imagine you invite your friend out to dinner <laughs> and they do that thing where like an hour before they're like, hey... So-and-so was with me. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if they tag along? You cannot say no. You, yeah. There's no polite way to say, honestly, I don't love Brian. <laughs> and maybe you, maybe you do love Brian, but maybe you just don't want to see Brian right now. Yeah. You'd rather spend one-on-one time with your other friend. Mm-hmm. You can't say that. No. Then you just have to deal with annoying Brian. I know. I mean, maybe some people are more social than us, and they think that that would be fun to have an unexpected mm. social interaction. Very, very social people disturb me. <laughs> I think you should be a little bit leery and hateful of all <laughs> other humans. That's going to be your own unpopular <laughs> opinion. <laughs> be hateful of almost everyone. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. Reversing into a parking spot is superior to parking nose first. I would agree. I think it's harder. It, it takes time. But if you just put a little bit more effort in, your departure, mm, like better. So there's only one time that I've done that in the past six years. That but, did somewhere? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was at a soccer game and driving out of the spot. Oh, it was like a former memory for you. I hit a man. Do you <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I didn't forgot. hit him. I didn't hit you him. You maimed someone. No, I didn't hit him. He walked into the side of the car. I was pulling out. He was walking backwards, and he didn't notice that I was pulling out. Like, I was past him. He walked into the rear side of the vehicle. He was a bit intoxicated. He was drunk. Yeah, but it was a very disturbing moment. He started yelling at me that I had hit him, which yep. I, with the side of my car is not possible when I'm going straight. Like, you walked into my car. Anyway, so that happened to me when I had reversed backed in. in. Yeah. So, you know what? I Like, it doesn't feel... Okay. Like that is I'll give you a superior. Pass. Yeah. Yeah. You had a, a traumatizing experience. I did. Okay. Okay. Time for hypothetical freaks. <laughs> this is Whoa, I did it. Oh Shane. <laughs> Shane. I'm doing it really well. <laughs> you can always do that, and no one wants to hear that. I'm doing a drum roll if you have no idea what's happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it for longer than a second Sometimes at a time. I like to do that. There's a misconception out there oh, okay. that disabled people are not Really mm-hmm. talented. Oh, Shane. Um, I would like to refute that. Good my, job. My oral. I don't mean that sexually. My mouth. You didn't? No. That's shocking to me. I meant my tongue. It's well, it sounds like okay. Um, Let's move on. Anyway, <laughs> this is the parental version of hypothetical freaks because Shane's parents are coming to town Hi, in, a, Mom and Dad. in a couple weeks and yes. we are preparing. We are preparing. And the way that we prepare is by making up funny, hypothetical, mm-hmm. uh, ridiculous things that we could do to make the visit mm, more entertaining. <laughs> um, number one. Oh, uh, we're starting off strong. Go I ahead. Think that when they arrive at our Airbnb here, we should kind of timidly let them know that there is only one bed <laughs> and that the four of us are going to have to share. Mm-hmm. You know, really start them off on that. Yeah. And then... <laughs> We have two other bedrooms in real life. What well, keep those doors closed for the first three nights? And when they, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, just kidding. Then, Wasn't that funny? Accidentally leave one open. <laughs> I'd be like, "What? There was more beds." We don't like to use those. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that room's drafty. So. <laughs> 
my mom is very much like me in the need for a plan mm -hmm. and scheduling. Nice schedule. I definitely inherited that from her. Yeah. Um. So I think what I could do to really mess with her, uh, I love you, mom, is <laughs> when they arrive at the airport, which I know she's already like stressed about stressed and planning and finding each other. We've never yeah. been here before. So it's like, yeah, you know, more intense. All the feelings that you would be feeling if we were flying to a new place. Yeah. I mean, my hands are sweating just thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, but when they land and they text us like, hey, we're here, I'm dead us, I'm going to reply, <laughs> it's this week? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're back in Minnesota. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would never do that. I would never do that yeah, to my parents. But that is so but funny. it's really fun to think about. <laughs> They're really excited to come out here to California, though. It is the furthest west that your mom has ever been. I don't know about your dad. I, I know, know she said dad, that. I don't think they've ever been to LA. Yeah. So they're excited to come out here. I think we should teach them, Shane, just, you know, to be polite. We should teach them uh, Los Angeles etiquette. Oh my God. Very. I mean, like there's. Make it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's some important rules that they should know as they arrive. I'm going to say that when you're at a restaurant, it's customary <laughs> to get the Raider or waitress's attention by stomping your feet <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> that feels appropriate. Yeah. Um, and that when you're done with your meal, uh, to let the waiter or waitress know that you're finished, <laughs> you place your dishes on the floor <laughs> next to you. I mean, we know it's weird, but it's how it is out here. I know. Like me, my mom and dad don't really like follow celebrity life. <laughs> you know, if I name 10 celebrities... I don't think they could name them. Well, I, yeah, I don't think you could name them. <laughs> um, but they certainly don't know what most celebrities look like. Yeah. And so I think as we're walking around, <laughs> I'm going to just point to random civilians. I'm like, do you know who that is? That's Joshy Josh over there. You should give me a photo. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get the <laughs> A non celebrity. You're gonna enhance their experience. They're gonna come go home and be like, We spotted hundreds of celebrities. These are all just mean. These are just <laughs> mean. That's prank parents. you're pranking them. We are. I have that whole face is kind of like a prank. It, it's a hundred percent just pranking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We were going to make some more jokes, but I can't make this up. Someone is jackhammering outside <laughs> of our house right now. It's very noisy. It is. You can hear that. I apologize. In our ears, it sounds like someone is someone jack is jackhammering directly outside our house. <laughs> I hope that's happening while my parents are here. Uh huh. This is just normal here in LA. <laughs> uh, this is LA life. Enjoy yeah, it. It's nice. Um, but I'm very excited for their visit. I think it will be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. And hopefully they will have a good time too. All right. That was our episode of Junkyard Mayhem. I hope all of you enjoyed. And I hope you're not beating yourselves up for all of the ableist <laughs> misconceptions. And evil. Evil yeah. misconceptions that you hold about disability. <laughs> <laughs> no. We hope that everyone uh, enjoyed this. And if you did, please leave a review. Leave a like. Yeah. Share it. All right, we need to go. The jackhammer, uh, Shane. Uh, oh, yeah, I that's a... Jackhammer <laughs> you only have one sound. Okay. Multi-purpose. Everyone, it is a jet out there, and it sounds like it. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs>